Hi, I'm Mark Kella, your interim lead pastor, and this is your weekly word of encouragement. We're in the middle of our sermon series called Caring for God's Gifts, and we're having a delightful time learning about all the things that God has entrusted to us and how we respond by using them in ways which bring Him glory. Pastor Carrier got us off to a strong start on the, the parable of the ten talents, which is actually ten financial units, and uh, talked about how God has, owns this, but He's given it and, and trusts us to use it in ways which uh, bring Him profit. And then Pastor Tanner this last week kind of continued that theme, God owns our time, He's breathed into our nostrils the very breath of life, and that's that she owns our time. And there are ways that we can carve out pieces of time in such a way that we can strengthen our relationship with Him. And I love the sermon series, although I have to admit that maybe we've moved a little bit too far ahead of the spectrum. Because when we start off talking about how God owns everything, we've taken a, a, a leap when we say God owns everything and we ought to use it in ways that bless Him. Which is true, but in between is thankfulness. The first response of knowing that God owns everything and yet there's so much that I have that I can use that I call mine, which is a perfect way to talk about things. The first response is, I am so thankful that God has blessed me with so many things that I get to borrow while I'm here on this earth. I get to borrow this car, I get to borrow this house, I get to, to borrow this person that I call my wife or my husband. I get to borrow these children, that I, people that I call my children. And... Um, as we think about that, I think about a quote from Billy Graham, who said that a spirit of thankfulness is one of the most distinctive marks of a Christian whose heart is fully attuned to the Lord. One of the most distinctive marks of a Christian, Billy Graham said, is our thankfulness. And I've heard this from many other Christian people, and it's interesting, the Christians who really espouse this, that thankfulness is the first mark of really being a Christian, are some of the most powerful and certainly the most joyful Christians that I know. Well, it reminds me then of the, uh, the way that the 107th Psalm starts. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. It's a great verse. It's like many other of the, the verses in the Psalms that talk about giving thanks to the Lord. But as I was thinking about and meditating on it today, I thought, you know, it really exposes to us the two kinds of things that God trusts to us. Some of them are the physical things that, that we can touch and that we can see and we're, we're thankful for um, a nice day outside. We're thankful for the things that we have, the clothes that we wear or whatever, the, the physical things, and we should be thankful for them. But then it goes on to say His faithful love. And at that point, I'm going, oh, I'm so grateful for also the emotional, spiritual things that God has given me. He's given me affirmation from my wife. He's given me the, the little purr that I have from my cats uh, when I pet them. That's a, it's an emotional payoff. He has given me His unfaithful love, and He's given me the trust to people that work with me. I don't deserve any of that, but God has given to me those more intangible, unseeable, spiritual things that, that really bless our souls as well. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. I put, saw this put on a, on a meme. I've seen it on Facebook several times. I've seen it in posters, in stores, and in homes. If you woke up today with only the things that you thanked God for yesterday, how many things would you have today? If what you woke up today, what you had when you woke up today, were only the things that you thanked God for yesterday, would what you have, would it shrink quite a bit? It's a very graphic way of saying that God owns everything. And our first response ought to be to thank Him for that. And, but it's also a little bit guilt-inducing. So my way of responding to it is, I think, a little bit more positive. And you might want to try this yourself sometime. I remember back in uh, the days when we had two junior high age kids in our family. And uh, we were in one of those spurts of three or four days when we were all were pretty grumpy. We were all focused on all the things we didn't have. And, and I was hearing it from our son and our daughter that 
should have this and they can't have that and this horrible thing was happening at school and they're very unhappy and, and my wife she was unhappy about things she didn't have that she really deserved and I thought she did and I was feeling the lack and the emptiness of things some things that I wanted to be full and so we were just spilling over on our unhappiness on each other it wasn't a very um, gracious or loving family to be part of for those couple of days and so I just got tired of it so there has to be a way past this and so what I did was I gave everyone a sheet of paper and said, you've got 15 minutes, walk through this house, just in the house, walk in the house, spend 15 minutes writing down everything you see that you can be thankful for. And after 15 minutes, we gathered together, we shared those lists, and I can tell you, it changed our mood. We went from the grumpy family to the grateful family, and from one that no one wanted to be with to one that once again was something that God could use to attract people into his love and into his kingdom. Sometimes what I'll do, and on those days when personally I'm just feeling grumpy, I'm f sensing the loss of something I thought I should have, or there's some things that haven't gone my way, I'll just take my, my journal and I'll say, I'm gonna spend 10 minutes and I'm just gonna write down everything that I can think of to be thankful for. I start off with the obvious ones. I'm thankful for the, the breath of life, one more day to live. I'm thankful for salvation, the gift of salvation. I'm thankful for a great wife and family. And then I, I try to say, what are some things that are not so obvious? You know, I'm grateful that the tires in my car still work, although they need to be replaced. Not thankful for that. I'm thankful for uh, the, the way that people respond to me when I offer a new idea. I'm thankful for the inspiration that I get from some of the YouTube videos that I've watched recently. And I find that if I spend 10 or 15 minutes just doing this in my journal, well, number one, it's hard to keep it to 10 or 15 minutes. There's more and more things that you can do that it, once again, is a mood changer. So there's just a little thought to kind of add on to our idea of stewardship or of caring for God's gifts that our first response when we think of how God owns everything and he's lent some things to us uh, to use for a short while, our sh first response should be, thankfulness or gratitude. Say this Sunday, our pastoral candidate would be preaching, and I hope that you're planning to come. We need to have every eye, every ear, and every heart there to have a response to see if we're the kind of church he wants to be associated with, and he's the kind of pastor we want to lead us. And so I hope that you'll be here on Sunday. We do have our worship services that you're welcome to attend uh, every Sunday, but especially this Sunday at 8.30 and 10.30. Thanks so much.